good morning good evening all the viewers it is a great honor for us to be the part of the horasis extraordinary meeting topic of today's discussion is fostering purpose through movies this has gained more relevance during a time of global crisis and during a time when every country battles with recovery from the pandemic called which is called covid-19 or coronavirus so with that being said i would like to open this conversation today with mr majid majid in the world of cinema you are considered as one of the most important and the renowned filmmaker children of heaven Quran, the color of paradise, Muhammad, the messenger of God, and the list goes on. How do you make such great films that are commercially viable, but at the same time deliver so much impact? Majid sir, the floor is yours. Allah Taala Muhammad, Majid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. خب قبل از هر چیز سلام میکنم به مخاطبینی که به حال برنامه رو میبینن و تشکر که از اینکه فرصت پیش اومد که در واقع این گفتگوی خوبی رو با هم داشته باشیم خب برای من خیلی خلاصه اگر بخوام بگم میشه گفتش که بیشتر موضوعات که برای کار کردیم تحت عنوان موضوعات حال انسانی بوده چیزی که در واقع میشه گفتش که بلازه فطری همه انسان ها مشترک هستش مسائل انسانی و وقتی که به این بچه فطرت انسان ها نزدیک میشیم در واقع میشه گفتش که همه انسان ها رو میتونه در بر بگیره و مثل در واقع اون شعر معروف خود سعدی کردن تو سازمان ملل در واقع وجود داره همون بنی آدم یک دیگر هم. در واقع تحت عنوان موضوعات انسانی میشه گفتش که به فطرت انسان نزدیکه با این زبان خیلی میتونه در واقع تحصیل گذار باشه First I will salute uh, everybody and those who are actually watching this schedule, this program so I first and also I appreciate because of the opportunity that we have to communicate and to discuss together. With regard to your questions, I should mention that most of the subjects that actually I have all, uh, taken in my films, so refer to the spiritual side and also to the human values. And since these points and these values are common values around the world between the people, so can, can, they, they can have a very clear impact on all these people all around the world. As an example, so we can mention to the, uh, to the poem actually of the great uh, Iranian poems, uh, which actually we have in the United Nations actually, Sadi. So it means that the, when we are using the spiritual points, so we can have a very uh, transparent actually impact on everybody. Okay, so that's that's really great when you said spiritual and human values because you know um, world is kind of going through a lot of crisis and uh, having those two elements are very uh, very very important. So my another question to you is, what are the impact of politics and government on the films that you do, and does their interference hamper the success of the film? You know, from the creative process and also from the distribution side, if you can just. Uh, خب البته نظر خود من این استش که اساسا یعنی هنر میشه گفتش که هیچ هر وقت که نسبتش با سیاست در واقع نزدیک شده از من شکل روزمرگی به خودش گرفته و هنری که با سیاست بخواد آمیخته بشه مثل روزنامه میمونه مثل در واقع کارهای جورنالیستی میمونه و هیچ وقت نتونسته البته بوده که هنرهایی که با سیاست آمیخته بودن ولی هیچ وقت نتونسته تأثیر گذار باشه به اتفاق هنری ماندگاره که در واقع به انسان نزدیکه و به مسئله 
فطری انسان نزدیکه و یک زبان مشترک جهانی است و وقتی که هنر با اون زبان مشترک جهانی نزدیک میشه که اساسا میشه گفتش که در واقع فلسفه هنر هم همین هستش و اساسا رسالت هنر هم همین هستش که بتونه با توده های مردم با هر نژادی و با هر رنگی و با هر زبانی ارتباط برقرار کنه نظر اون هنری است که ماندگاره یعنی ماندگاری در همه عرصه چه در موسیقی چه در سینما چه در تئاتر چه در ادبیات هنرهای ماندگارن که در واقع با مردم و با همون فطرت انسانی نزدیک بودن و وقتی که با سیاست آمیخته میشه خب متاسفانه میشه گفتش که خیلی بردی نخواهد داشت البته میگم هنرهای بودن که با سیاست آمیخته شدن ولی مثل روزنامه بوده دیگه یعنی در واقع تاثیرات خودش رو به سادگی از دست داده ولی هنری ماندگاره که برای چه روز شعر مثلا در حافظ مولانا میبینیم که بعد از گذشت چندین قرن ببینیم همچنان همه جای دنیا با شرطات برقرار میکنن خیام همینجور چه در موسیقی همین چنین در سینما هم معتقدم که همین شکل فیلم های ماندگاری که با فطرت انسانی و با مسائل انسانی نزدیک بوده Mm. So I uh, personally I believe that uh, 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 when when actually when uh, the, the, those films which are very actually close with the politics so it would be like a kind of newspaper so they cannot be very effective so I I believe that actually Though uh, the, we can say that the, when you are talking about the art, so when it's referred to the spiritual side, so it will be more effective. And so this is the philosophy of art and also the message of art that can be uh, able to communicate actually with the people, the audiences all around the world. And so we have the same in music, also in the other fields, that when we are talking about the common and also with the talking about the human values when when it is related to the spiritual side so they can easily communicate with the with the audiences in different parts but of course we had kind of art actually they have been so uh, they have been affected by politics we have in the other side but i believe that actually in the cinema and also even in the music so those uh, are those uh, uh, part have been very successful which can refer actually and focus on the human values great so uh, can you tell us um, experience how was it making of mohammed the messenger of god it was such a i mean i mean i saw the trailer i haven't seen the film but such a beautiful trailer it was can you share us the experience of making the film اخی در مورد تجربه صحبت بکنیم در مورد فیلم حضرت محمد خان پجروهتون بودیم من آنوست این فیلم بودیدم و خیلی تحت تصدیل قرار گرفتم خب در مورد فیلم پیامبر هم همینجور حال ما تلاش کردیم که در واقع یک قراعت درستی از اسلام رو به دنیا معرفی بکنیم واقعا خب اون قراعتی که از اسلام در دنیا در طول این سالها وجود داشتهش قراعت درستی از اسلام نیست اسلام در واقع دین محبت دین دوستی دین صلح دین دوست داشتن و عشق ورزیدن به انسانه اسلامی که متصمه در دنیا در طول این سال متصمان شاهدش بودیم اسلامی است که میشه گفتش که در واقع اسمش رو فقط به سرقت بردن هیچ نسبتی با اسلام واقعی نداره اسلام دین است که میگه اصلا با خشونت با ترور با چیزهایی که متصمان در طول این سال توسط مثلا حکومت های در واقع علیه اسلام مادم کار کردن چه تحت عنوان اسلام حراسی مثل گروه های داله، داعش، طالبان و وحابیت که اساسا اومدن که یک قرارت دیگری از اسلام به وجود بیارن که این تلاش در طول این سالها دیدیم که چگونه بود من تلاش کردم که در با فیلم پیامبر محمد مسینجر در واقع قراعت درستی از اسلام رو یه گوشه ای از اسلام رو در واقع بتونیم قراعت بکنیم که میگم به اسلام واقعی نزدیکه همجور گفتم در کلام دین اسلام دین محبته دین دوستی و صلحه 
و ولی خب متاسفانه <تصفح> علی رغم همه این تمهیدات خب کشورهای بودن که نخواستن این فیلم دیده بشه مثل عربستان سعودی که به هر حال خیلی مخالفت شدید کردن و اصلا بدونی که فیلمو ببینن اعلام کردن که فیلم حرامه همچنان که هنون چنانه ما هم تا در هند مثلا متوجه به خدا آقای رحمان که موسیقی این فیلم رو کار کردن که کار خیلی ارزش بوده شده نتونستیم در مثلا خیلی کشورها حتی هند اکرام بکنیم فقط به دلیل همین وجوهات نگاه افراتی که در واقع در اون نگاه وجود داره که میخوان حقایق واقعی اسلام دیده نشه به خصوص توسط خود عربستان که یک نگاه خیلی در واقع رادیکالی وجود داره که به نظام هیچ نسبتی اصلا با اسلام نداره برحال تلاش کردیم توی که توی فیلم پیامبر یک چهره واقعی از اسلام رو نشون بده گوشه ای از چهره های واقعی اسلام We did our best actually to have a right interpretation of Islam and to introduce Islam to the world. You know, uh, the right, nowadays there is, there, is, there is a wrong interpretation of the real face of Islam. Islam is the religion of peace, affectionate friendship. And so this, the, but the, the, the interpretation that recently has been done about Islam is the near one. So Islam is not related to Uh, to violence, to terror. So we cannot say those kind of uh, interpretation which has happened by the extremists like Daesh, Taliban, is not a real interpretation of Islam. So we did our best to have a right and uh, interpretation and right introduction of Islam to the all around the world. Of course, there have been some countries that so they put sanctions against actually releasing of this film like Saudi Arabia, Even in India, with the collaboration of Mr. Rahman for such a great music and in this film, we could not release the film in India as well. So this is because, and the point actually is, in many countries, still they have not seen the film, and so they have made a judgment. My point has been always that first see the film, and then make a correct and real judgment about the film. So my, I tried actually to uh, reveal the... and the correct actually points and facts about Islam in this field. That, that's a really great point because, you know, um, all around the world there is Islamophobia and that's very unfortunate. So, um, you know, but that's a totally different topic of discussion, uh, but which is much needed in the time that we live. Because um, in every country, racism is on rise. Exactly. So that being said, I would not like to go to another uh, Academy Award uh, director, which is also equally loved and respected in India, Mr. Ashutosh Gowari. So, um, Ashutosh Ji, um, you, are, you have made such beautiful films like Lagan, Swades, Jodha Akbar, um, and I, I've watched all of them multiple times. And going to that is one of my favorites, and the songs in that, actually one song, very beautiful music on Mr. Ahmad. So what I wanted to know is each and every film of yours always delivers a social and a very strong a social and a cultural message. Cinema is a powerful tool for cultural awareness and advocacy. What is the role of films in today's Indian society? Can you please share some light? Yeah. A very good evening to Mr. Majidi um, and, and hi, Air. Yeah. Um, a, a big, big hello to everyone at Horasis who's watching right now. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on this platform. And uh, let me first talk about that. Um, you know, when you say cinema today, that actually has not changed so much because our first interest will still be uh, to entertain. And in India, when you're saying Indian cinema, there are about 30 languages. And cinema gets made in 30 languages. And each of those languages, you have the commercial mainstream cinema as well as the <coughs> cinema that's trying to say something. What I feel very importantly is now we have, tra- we have started uh, while entertaining, we are trying to create an awareness. Uh, we are trying to educate. We are trying to you know, throw light on the ills of society, you know, uh, revive cultural issues um, and good propaganda. So when I'm saying good propaganda, I mean whether it's patriotic or it's nationalistic or even cultural. Uh, that's something that we are uh, 
definitely focusing on much much more right now and going from there i feel that for, for in cinema you know we have teachers in school and you have teachers at home which are your parents uh cinema still is uh in a way the director in the theater is also a teacher so, so it's a very responsible position that a filmmaker has that when he makes a film and he tries to entertain he must definitely try and um, also give some kind of a, a social or a moral message yeah. about the funny in action that's great so lagan was a masterpiece can you tell us what makes the film a masterpiece lagan is i think it's a very tough uh, question to answer uh you know i don't think any filmmaker ever sets out to make a masterpiece uh you know you never hear as a marketing peg or as a, as a promotional peg that here comes this filmmaker's new masterpiece it never happened uh i think every filmmaker is trying to make a good film and when i say good film i mean you know you're trying to bring in all the elements from all the different departments of filmmaking to tell that story well I think masterpieces is something that is a phenomenon that happens after the film comes out, because as a filmmaker, when you make a movie, you have a target audience in mind, and you and you're hoping that the investment comes out by way of that audience that's going to view the film. If the film is really good and it's connected, it it crosses over. It crosses over from one strata of society to the next. Even in India, it crosses over from one state to the next. Sometimes it crosses over a nation and goes crosses over to another. Uh, a country i think that is something that cannot be planned and when that happens something about the film which is a universal language is connecting with an audience and it's provoking people to think when people walk out of the theater they go home and they still think about the to somewhere it starts growing and you know you realize after 3 4 years that people have started calling it a masterpiece and um, i think i think that's what uh, uh, i would categorize that no you cannot create a masterpiece it happens it's a phenomenon yeah it's a phenomenon that's that's very well put so when you say about you said about universal language so right now you know universe is globally connected with uh, covid <laughs> right and it has touched every chord of human existence there is no doubt to the purpose given as well as hard breaking breaking stories that we each and have each one of us have either experienced or have heard of mm. so as a filmmaker moving forward what kind of cinema would you focus on oh um so from the which one we are you know right now because the corona virus one common emotion that the world is feeling i think is fear so i actually i would love to make a comedy which is uh, a black comedy which is about how people are constantly being suspicious of each other how everyone is going mad with the sanitization how uh, um, you know fear is getting the better of everyone and the human humanity realizes that the only way to fight this is by becoming carefree and something of that nature because we right now as a cinema going audience do not want anything that gives us pressure because we are coming out of a fear so it needs to be a, a, a cinema which is more i would like to make something more cheerful than uh, than you know making something serious uh, having said that i think the various platforms that are now emerging and in the last 6 months you know so many uh, ott platforms have also become essentials they have categorized as essentials so while that is happening i think uh, i don't think cinema is going to take a back seat theaters are going to open soon again and i think we will be back into the theaters with our movies yes absolutely i mean <clears throat> if, if, you know what i have learned is uh, talking to many people is that music and cinema has kept us bonded and alive during this uncertain time and when you said about black comedy you know using sanitizers We have the United States is running on toilet paper. Can you believe? <laughs> And uh, it's it's so funny. So now from uh, Academy nominated uh, directors, I'm going to move on to Academy uh, winner and Grammy Award winner, Mr. A R Rahman. So with your directorial debut, uh, <laughs> why do you use a unique uh, sense of smell 
And why did you use virtual reality? And I'm going to add a question to it: Is what has been the impact of new technology on filmmaking and music creation? I think. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my respects to Majidi, Ashutosh, my friends, and all of you watching. Um, I, after winning the Oscar and after becoming a me member of the Academy, you know, I had met a lot of friends. I was in LA for almost five years, and I had the um, opportunity and you know the honor of meeting some of the world's best, you know, like Spielberg's editor and Spielberg and you know all these technology people and you know various studio heads and all that stuff. And then that uh, I had a lot of time. I was doing Hollywood movies where uh, you can only do one work at a time. And the rest of the time, I was using my, uh, you know, on the weekends, I would use it to go for workshops and on script writing and about learning about technology. I did a course in MIT, you know, about imaging and all the stuff. So all that, I felt like I can do a little more than just doing music. And uh, so one day we were, uh, my wife and me were just discussing that she's a big fan of scent and and smell and everything. I said, why don't we do a movie, a mini movie, like based on smell and so that led to an idea when, when I saw virtual reality and what it, it did to us. And everybody was fearful about that. Like, uh, how do you exhibit and how do you make money out of this? It's difficult. I said, okay, let's for the heck of it, just do it. And then we had a story and went ahead. And it actually drove us. You know, I was not driving it. It drove me. <laughs> and in the narrative and in how uh, the possibilities of um, something completely new, something which I felt like the world has to witness together. A story, a narrative where uh, there is smell, there is haptic, there is feeling, there is music, and the the visual, which is completely 360, and which, especially the close-ups, feel like you know they're looking at your soul. So the story was actually constructed. The line was constructed with. VR in mind and how it could change the whole engagement of an audience. You know, once you put a VR device, you can't do texting or you can't do FaceTime or you can do anything. You can you just have to watch. So the responsibility of a filmmaker is much increases much more. And I feel like in a movie, there's so much of content. You know, uh, uh, there's something on the phone, there's something on the TV, something on the iPad, something in the car, something. And you are kind of decensed. Uh, sensitized, you know, and whereas when you take a medium like virtual reality, mixed reality, and all these things, and if you dive deep into it, it is the new thing. I think it is the next level, definitely. Because when I, the past three years, we've been trying to finish this movie. We said now we can do a lot of intimate conversation. We can do something face to face, and something which really penetrate you. And what each image stays with you at least for three, four days because of the impact of the resolution and, and the storytelling and emotion. And uh, so I think there's a new breed of something is happening there. I feel. And so that's what intrigued me into diving into that and becoming a filmmaker. Wow, that's great. So you have worked now in Hollywood for more than a decade, right? So what is the major difference between working in Hollywood and um, other film industries? Because you have equally touched other film industries as well. Well, in Hollywood, uh, the heroes save the world. The Americans save the world. The Americans <laughs> fix everything. <laughs> they, they teach us all of us. And <laughs> no, in a way, because it's an industry. It is made, and it's luckily, it's also distributed all in the world. So that's what we feel. Oh. They are superior. They do everything. So it's important to, for in a country like big as India, to have their own narrative, the own own pride and own you know. Uh, for instance, I was just discussing with some of my friends, like brown people, or you know, when when we use the same camera on us, we need more light because we didn't invent the camera, <laughs> right? So there are many things which needs to be reapproached. I felt like uh, if if we need to tell our own stories in a way where we want to feel that intimidation or we want to feel the sense of uh, low self-esteem. or and, and there is so much to tell from this part of the world, uh, so much art. And, and I feel like 
some of the best things are still not represented in in movies the way it should be and the world has not seen it the way they should see it and uh, it it gives us i mean even after 27 28 years of doing music in the industry you feel like there's a new uh, you know new interest coming in like oh there's so much to do uh, because you know this is what we've been seeing from hollywood what if we and imagine this past 10 years the quality of our movies um the quality of the color correction the quality of sound everything has gone uh, many notches up because before we used to have a problem with telecine and we used to have problem with the audio issues now if you play something of western or play some indian thing you know the quality is up there the visual quality is up there you know 4k 8k we have all the stuff now i think now it's our makers coming out with amazing storytelling and and taking over i feel like Right. Cultural innovation. So, so um, how is the film industry and the music industry are uh, planning uh, to come back post COVID? Because I know from the live performance perspective, right, the music industry is really um, in a very bad shape. So, how is that? How do you see? What do you envision? I think music has been consumed already. You know, there is so there's so much. um even my catalog they are all going back to the old catalog listening to stuff stuff which they've not uh, they've probably gone past by but they didn't care to listen to they go back and listen to movies which you not seen in the past 10 years we go back the world has become had become very very fast and somewhere i felt like we were running and left our souls behind and this year i felt like we were catching up with our souls we were catching up with the family catching up with the friends catching up with uh probably the true nature of life a living a life and not uh, not worrying about running and 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 making uh, you know deadlines meet and and stuff like that and except for the tragedy of you know people not having medicines migrant workers and uh, people who are who have weak immunity passing by i feel like this uh, the many good things which all happened you know the the weather the the climate change thing has been approached well it's much more um the air is more purer you know the images when you capture now it looks like oh my god this is so i've never seen chennai like that i've never seen delhi like that so that stuff has also happened it's not as that we don't have to travel to work sometimes you know some we can have two days at home working on zoom or skype so you don't need to be a ritualistic going to the office and wasting your time we can also there are new ways which are invented now i feel like this forced us to look into life in a very different way right so um i'm going to ask this question is that you have a massive social media following right um, i mean i was looking on twitter uh, it's 23.3 million and on uh, uh, instagram i think we are around 4 plus million so right now when for a public figures like you and i mean all of you um you know trolling and fake news becomes a part of it so what is your personal role in making the truth louder because in in such times right when celebrities uh, are reached out to for opinions or you know ideas awareness how how do you manage that i switch off <laughs> i switch off internally because Uh, in music you need to be you need to reflect something which is very very pure but one message can distort your mind you know trolls can distort your mind but then you, after a while you want to take only what you want to take and you you know that the other stuff is all mm-hmm. like how people live a kids to on bathroom walls when nobody knows that their name they just do you know dirty stuff and go i think the internet and in comments have become like that when you're anonymous you have the entitlement to attack anybody Mm-hmm. and you don't see uh, whether that person has has got value or no value you feel like it's your right to do something and you know cause harm so i am very very uh, uh i try to internalize myself like even if i say something will i waste people's time or uh, will that be useful or keeping quiet is better so even while putting everything i just think probably some 20 times to say okay should i put it out i don't want to waste people's time because time is something which never comes back and uh, now everybody knows that uh, news is not taken as seriously as before 
even when they sensationalize they go to the top level of in music in music uh, thing they say pianissimo and fortissimo everything is in fortissimo there's no dynamics in it everything is bang on in the red level sensational 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 after that yeah yeah what next what disaster news is waiting for you know it kind of uh, desensitizes you unfortunately and i think the world has invented a monster also it's a blessing and a curse internet and you know all the social media is a blessing and a curse and we need to find safety to our children what they see and what uh, because the innocence is lost when you lose innocence, innocence you know it's it's not a good i don't know whether we, your adult would be the same when you lose that stuff you know you see yeah. bad things happening to women you know 8 month year old child and 2 year old child and that's inhuman and uh, yeah. that's the part which really really pains correct and correct. and when they expand all that stuff and when there's a bomb like when they expand all that stuff it makes you lose hope in life the joy of life is always seeing beauty the joy of life is seeing uh, fellow humans you know living beautifully and you know and and to appreciate each other's culture complement each other and there's a kind of satisfaction in see oh my god look at that culture it's so beautiful look at that dance so good and look at the way they're dressing it's so good so not everybody has to be the same and the whole beauty of humanity is to be who you are but without clashing you know no ideological clash would happen and that is the problem everybody wants to be on believe in one ideology i think it should be as long as you don't harm each other it's fine to be who you are i feel and probably that's the solution for the world to to be understanding yeah. and to coexist and to appreciate yeah wow that was that was really profound what what you said and i completely agree with it so um mr majidi are you online because we are unable to see you the he is online i can see you can see him yeah Oh great great because yes. I am unable to see him yeah yeah uh but yeah so as long as you're online and you can hear it it's, it's fine so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to ask a common question to all of you because um i cannot just contain my excitement and how honored i am to be sitting around you know academy award the nominees and winners so i feel like i'm at oscar so i'm going to take that moment So you have been, you all have been to Oscars. Can you tell us, like, what impact does, like, you know, um, this uh, ceremonies like Oscars have on the films that you make and represent, and what does that it means for your country that you are representing? So I would like to start first with Mr. Majid. خب بدونم که حالا توجه کنن شما تو اسکار بدونن نامز هر دو فاجعه از اسکار است. یعنی واقعا این سه اسکار یا برنامه این سه اسکار چه تأثیری میتونه رو فیلم شما داشته باشه و همچنین چه میتونه تأثیری رو کشور شما داشته باشه این مناسبت ها این این ایونت ها بر حال هر جوایزی در مسیر فیلم سازی برای میتونه تأثیر گذار باشه به خصوص اسکار بر حال فیلم ساز رو میتونه در واقع خیلی جهانی تر بکنه نگاهش رو و مسیرش رو و از این نظر که در واقع میتونه جوایز مثل اسکار یک فیلم ساز یا یک هنرمندی رو در واقع عرصه جهانی رو بیشتر براش باز بکنه به همون شکل خب مسئولیت چه بیشتر میکنه یعنی مسئولیت در واقع هنرمند بیشتر میشه توقعاتی که نسبت به او دارن و نسبت به آثارش در میشه و هر حال یک رابطه متقابلیه یعنی هر چقدر این جایزه ها جوایز مهم میشه به تب مسئولیت به نظر من فیلم ساز هم و یا هنرمند هم خوب خیلی مهم میشه برای اینکه همه توقع ازش دارن که استاندارده را حد کنه نوع نگاهش نوع بیانش نوع, نوع سینمایش حالا تو هر زمینه که هست برها به نظر من خب این جوایز ها اساسا کمک میکنه به اینکه هنرمند رو در یک عرصه جهانی بیشتری معرفی کنه و با مخاطب گسترده تری در واقع روبرو کنه که این خوب میتونه هم خیلی خوب باشه و هم میتونه خیلی خطرناک باشه یعنی اینکه در واقع اگر که نتونیم موقعیت رو به خوبی ازش استفاده کنه بلا فاصله میتونه در واقع مسیر عوض بشه ولی در نهایت بر حال خیلی میتونه تاثیرات خوبی برای یک هنرمند در عرصه همون جهانی شدنش بگذاره 
definitely the, those events and those actually awards would be very effective. So, so it can cause actually for the director actually um, make it actually as a kind of worldwide director, but of course at the same time put a responsibility on the shoulder of the director as well. So uh, when we have the um, important awards and important actually events, so at the same time, so the responsibility of the artist would be much more uh, different and so he must actually respect more international standards on the process of filmmaking and on the way of communicating with the audiences. So definitely these events and also these awards would be a kind of contribution to the director and to the artist to be introduced to the world of cinema and so to have a world actually the wider range of the audiences. But at the same time, it is it can be dangerous as well. So if they cannot uh, take the right advantage of this situation and circumstances, so the process of filmmaking uh, would be uh, would be completely um, would be completely changed. Interesting. Uh, uh, Ashutoshji, what's your take on this? Uh, I agree with uh, what Mr. Majidi just said. Uh, I also feel that uh, when your film is entered at your country's entry, uh, it's like the Olympics of cinema. So when you enter there and you look at probably 75, 80 other countries representing their films, and I'm mm -hmm. talking purely about the foreign film uh, category, it's amazing. It's the, it's outstanding talent of that year coming and representing the best films. How on earth are you going to actually select the last five or the winner? It's a very difficult task. <clears throat> what happens is you get such a big influx of uh, culture and political and social topics of those different countries that it sends you back with a lot more vigor, a lot more ideas. Uh, a lot many more genres which you have not been attempting in the past and today earlier we couldn't see all, all the films now with the uh, all the OTT platforms and television it's now become easier to see what are the films that are being entered there so we definitely create a big influence on our, uh, uh, our audiences as well as our filmmakers and I think uh, this is a the Oscars has created that buzz and I think even BAFTA, which is the British Academy or the Caesar in France, all of these awards, even the festivals are creating that buzz and creating a, a very, very challenging atmosphere, environment for uh, Indian filmmakers. And it's been especially exhilarating to see so many of our filmmakers from all our different languages uh, competing and winning not only at uh, 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 the national level, but I'm seeing at international film festivals. Mm -hmm. So, so I think somewhere uh, the Oscars have spread that 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 energy, that vibe of international cinema. Great. Great. What's your take on it, Mr. Rahman? I think they said it all. I, what I want to add is. Uh, in the world of divis I mean, divisive world now, where uh, people are fearful about other communities, other um, nationalities, yes, um, it's very important that uh, a place like India or a place like Iran, you know, they need to put the film up there, and then the world needs to watch it to understand that these are humans. They have the same thing, the same aspirations of of love and 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 higher ideals and and spirituality and everything. So when they look at other people's lives, you know, they won't attack us. <laughs> you know, we're getting attacked everywhere. You yeah. know, whether it's in the US or Australia, you know, you see racial attacks and happening. But when you see a superior, in the, in the a cultural superiority, and then because ours is like probably 4,000 years old culture. And when you see people like that, why the way, why are they dressed like that? Why are they, why do they look like that? There's a kind of respect which comes in. And it's important that we represent our movies, our culture all over the world. And when it wins an award, it wins the hearts. 
it, you know mm-hmm. when you see parasite you know what what south korea is now the whole world has seen parasite and uh, unfortunately our makers still have to prove and and they have to win I, my dream is that one day i want to see an indian director stand at the oscars winning you know five six oscars there and and the world should see india in the way they uh, ought to see that's my dream absolutely and uh, that that will happen soon uh, you know because we are the consumers of the the content and we see the new filmmakers and even you know washitosh ji the, the kind of cinema you guys are making is phenomenal so we have now only 5 minutes on our hand and you know you all of all of i have are doing such inspiring work so it is a must for all of our viewers to uh, get a, uh, a message from you so in less than 30 seconds i'm going to start with uh, mr majibi uh, can you like in the twitter style you know let's take it that way you have the character can you share a message with the viewers uh, who are inspired by your work in 30 seconds please you can dar waqt bare mukhatabin tun kan dar minan ye paigham twitter bedin ye jumle paigham bedin من میخوام بگم که واجه هایی مثل عشق، محبت، دوست داشتن، گذشت، فداکاری همه اینا چیزهایی که همه انسان ها به طور مشترک داره در همه جای دنیا و وقتی که ما با این زبان با همدیگه صحبت بکنیم میتونه پیام در واقع بزرگی برای همه انسان ها داشته باشه که همه انسان ها اساسا در صلح و آرامش میتونن زندگی کنن که این با فطرت در واقع انسان نزدیکه که همون عشقه که واجه است که همه انسان های دنیا مشترک هستن و در وجود همه به شکل فطری وجود داره و امیدوارم که در واقع روزی برسه که دنیای پر از صلح آرامش داشته باشیم So when we are talking about the words like love and peace so affectionate so these are the common words between the humans all around the world and so uh, i hope actually for a day that uh, so the love which is the common actually feeling between the people in the world and so we have a world full of love and peace thank you so i'm going to say in 150 characters uh, ashutosh ji from 250 because we have only two minutes now <laughs> yeah okay so so um I think if I'm telling a fellow filmmaker, I mean, not fellow filmmaker, but I mean someone who's breaking into the film business or is an actor or maybe someone from any other profession, uh, I would say that just focus on the three virtues of uh, patience, uh, a positive attitude and perseverance. And just arm yourself with these so that you can fight failure and rejection. Can I answer? I just have a... Um... and what i believe on social media because you talked about social media i feel like um what we should follow and i'm tell my kids the same thing speak a good word or be silent put something good or don't put anything <laughs> and don't waste your energy in attacking someone and um, having the entitlement to do that stuff because it gives you peace when you don't do any harm even words or action so tomorrow is uh, gandhi jayanti so ahimsa non violence day Yes, absolutely. So, to the viewers, we got an opportunity to hear from this wonderful filmmakers and also from such humble human beings, because you learned from them. The words that we're talking was spirituality, human being, you know, being human, love. That's all is required in the world that we are living. We are living in a very uncertain time where fear takes over hope. the economic downturn shift in the future of work uncertainty in general due to pandemic are some of the challenges we all are facing music and entertainment is keeping us bonded active and alive through the world of cinema we are able to visually understand what is happening in the society at large and the countries as well right movie is a tool that is able to drive the impact in today's world take us from the harsh realities of life sometimes into happiness and hope when we talk when we talk about impact qualities such as care respect you know love they all come and this human being embody those qualities this filmmaker's rocket storytelling 
and you know better storytelling and music creation helps in creating positive content you know which makes world a better place you all are proud of the world cinema and once again it was an honor to have you thank you very much namaste thank you thank you thank you thank you bye 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 everyone bye thank you so much lovely thank you okay uh rahman uh, i for says sugam chika dari mikoni rahman just what can i say what you what are you doing now rahman there is no news long time no news no i'm just uh, working on some of my mentor's movie it's a 9th century movie called pony in selvan and uh, finishing my vr movie virtual reality دامن <laughs> که اونجا بازی که بازیگرم نوجوانم جایزه چیزه گرفت so actually the the young actors actually got the special acting prize for the um, young talents young talents oh that's great yeah, yeah. i love to watch uh, it if you have a link i'll, I'll watch it میگه که بتونی یه لینک هم بدیم من ببینم definitely yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, امیدوارم که به حال شرایط به زودی تمام بشه که بتونیم همدیگه رو ببینیم دیگه طرایی داریم برای تو هند و یه کار تو چین تو حالا میخوام برم بکنم so i have some actually program for working actually in india and china hope the situation to be settled very soon so we can have again collaboration together sure absolutely yeah. great great okay thank you rahman shukran we'll in touch shukran okay. bye Okay. Bye, Chow. Bye, Chow. Bye, Chow.